Okay, so welcome to the second podcast. This is on measurement and significant figures. Um, first, let's discuss measurement. Measurement is always a number with a unit, and all measurements always have to have units. So you might used to be seeing um, measurements like two pounds. Okay, you've got a number two and a unit pounds or maybe um, 52 miles. So 52 is my number, miles is my unit. Or you can say you have something like, um, let's see, um, six books. Okay, six books. So again, six is my number, books is my unit. So a number with a unit constitutes a measurement. So there's all sorts of different types in units. Primarily, the types of units we are going to be dealing with is length, which we'll measure in meters or centimeters, okay? Um, we'll also be measuring in grams a lot on our scales, and then volume or milliliters, okay? So those will be a lot of the measurements we're going to take in class. There's also all sorts of other units like seconds for time or um, moles, which we'll learn about later in the, in the school year. So you primarily have two types of measurements. You've got qualitative measurements, which are words. It's a description. Um, it's heavy. It's hot. I'm tired. It's um, warm outside today. And then you have quantitative measurements, and those depend on, those are numbers or quantities. So like it's 95 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? It has a number attached to it, unlike saying it's hot, which is a qualitative measurement. Your quantitative measurements depend on two things, the reliability of the measuring instrument, and then how well you read it, okay? And that's up to you at this point. So, you know, you can have tools that are more precise, and we're going to talk about precision here in just a moment. Okay, so how good is the instrument that you're using? And then whether or not you read it properly is going to determine how good your quantitative measurement is. So, accuracy and precision. Accuracy is how close you are to the true value. Precision is how close the measurements are to each other. Okay, so if we take a look here, we've got a bullseye. And with the bullseye, you know, I've got my arrows and they're all over the place. In the second one, okay, they're all grouped together here. So they're precise, they're grouped together, but they're not accurate. And then in the third one, they are accurate and precise. They're all grouped together in the bullseye. And that's our goal, okay? So in lab, what we're trying to do is we're trying to be precise, get good repeatable measurements, and be accurate. Get close to what it really is. Now, there's always some imperfection, and this imperfection depends on our instruments. So measurements are performed with instruments, and nothing we have is perfect. Okay, nothing can be read to an infinite number of decimal places. So if we take a look at the balances below, which one has the most uncertainty? So here you have a triple beam balance that you might have used in um, another science class here in number one. In number three, you have an electronic balance. We're going to use something like that in science lab here. And then number two, you have a grocery store balance. So the one that probably gives you the best answer is three, and the one that probably gives you the worst answer, has the greatest uncertainty in the measurement, is the one you'd typically find in a grocery store. Okay, so this uncertainty leads us to this concept of significant figures. And what significant figures are, is they are all the numbers in a measurement that we know for certain plus one more that you estimate. So significant figures in a measurement include all of the digits that are known. So everything you know plus one more that you estimate. 
And so it's this idea of significant figures that tell us how accurate a number is. It tells us how uncertain we are about certain measurements. So if we take a look at these rulers here, okay, which measurement is the best? We've got ruler A. Well, ruler A only has, it has no lines and it can only measure up to um, one meter. Okay, so you see one meter there. So we can do all the numbers we're certain about. Well, we're certain it's less than one. And then estimate. We estimate it's about 0.6. The second ruler, ruler B, has lines now marking every 10. So we are certain right here that our, our wood stick is past 60 centimeters. So it's definitely 0.6. So that's the number I know for sure. And then I estimate one past that. And I say, oh, it just looks a little bit past it. So I say 0.61. In measurement C, obviously, this ruler or this meter stick is much more accurate because it has all the little lines going across. And if you look real close, we can again say that we're sure about the 6. And if you could see this up close, you could see that it's not quite to this first one. So it's 0 0.60. Those are the numbers we're sure about. And then the 7 is what we estimate. So 0 0.607. So which one's the best? Well, obviously, it's going to be um, C. Okay, it's the one that's going to be the best one. It's the most accurate. Now, when we're doing calculations and trying to figure out significant figures when you're doing math in this class, there's four different rules. The first one is everything that's not a zero is considered to be significant. So if I'm looking at three, four, five, six, every number that's not a zero is significant. So this, two, three, four, this one has four significant figures. Okay. Our next rule. Leading zeros do not count as significant figures. So now you have this number, 0 0.0486. So these zeros are called leading zeros. There are zeros in the front. So they don't count as significant figures. Because of the last rule, it says any number that's not a zero counts. So this one has three significant figures. Your other rule, zeros. Captive zeros always count as significant zeros. Sometimes I say captive zeros are called sandwiched. So sandwiched zeros. These are zeros stuck in the middle. Okay, so any number that's not zero counts. So there's one, two, three. Those numbers are significant. And you see now how this zero is stuck between the six and the seven. It counts also. That's a sandwich zero. So that is four significant figures. Last one about zeros is trailing zeros. Okay, trailing zeros are significant if the number contains a written decimal point. The decimal point has to be written. So trailing zeros are zeros that end a number. So again, if we're counting our significant figures, the nine, the three, because they're not zeros, these are trailing zeros. They're zeros that end the number. Is there a decimal point? There sure is. There's a decimal point right there, so these two count. And we have a total of four significant figures. Okay, so these take a lot of practice getting used to them. It's really the zeros that are the tough part in counting significant figures. You've got two special situations that have an unlimited or an infinite amount of significant figures. If you count something, if we say there's 23 people or 36 deaths, this is infinite significant figures because we don't have 36 and a half deaths in here. Okay, we have exactly 36. 
The other special, special situation is an exactly defined quantity. Okay, sometimes we'll call these conversion factors. Conversion factors. Like there's 60 minutes in one hour. There's exactly 60 minutes in one hour. There's exactly 24 hours in one day. Okay, so that's an idea of uh, defined quantities or conversion factors. And you're going to see some of those as we um, practice some problems and go throughout the course. So the only way to learn these is by doing them. So we need to go through and try these out some more. So now's your turn to practice. What I want you to do is pause the recording and try and figure these out. And then you can unpause the recording and check your answers. So pause the recording now and try the practice problems. Okay, so for this first example here, 1.0070 meters, any number that's not a zero is significant, so those two numbers count. That means these two zeros are sandwiched. This zero on the end is trailing, and there is a decimal point, so it counts, and there is a total of five significant figures. I abbreviate significant figures as sig figs or SF because it gets too long to write sometimes. Okay, so all those numbers count. 17.10 kilograms. So again, any number that's not a zero, the one, the seven, and the one counts. It's a trailing zero with a decimal point. So that, that zero counts. It's a total of four sig figs. Every number counts on that one. Your next, next example. 100,890. Again, the 1, the 8, and the 9 all count. That sandwiches these two zeros, so they count. This last zero is a trailing zero, and there's no decimal point, so it doesn't count. There's only five significant figures. Okay, this number is in scientific notation, and I'm going to talk more about scientific notation in, an, I believe it's the next lecture. Okay, with scientific notation in terms of significant figures, you really don't need to worry about this part, the times 10 to the whatever. All you have to do is look at the number in front. So in this case, all of these numbers are significant, and we have three sig figs. All right, this next example, 0 .0054, obviously the 5 and the 4 count. These other three zeros are leading zeros, and leading zeros never count. So it's just two significant figures. 3 million, 3 million 200,000 milliliters. Okay, the 3 and the 2 obviously count. You have five trailing zeros, but there's no decimal point. So it's only two significant figures. Five cats. Okay. Did I trick you on this one? This one's considered infinite because it's a counted number. So these top ones all came from some sort of measurement, but this last one with five cats is a counted value, and so it's considered infinite significant figures. Now, in this class, I know some of you are worried we are going to have a lot of math, okay? And the math can affect our significant figure calculations. The rule of thumb is, in a calculated answer, the answer, it cannot be more accurate than the least accurate measurement from which it was calculated. So what that means ultimately is we have to round off some of our calculations because your calculator is just going to spit out a whole bunch of numbers, but you can't use all of them. You don't want to write down all those numbers on the screen. So we have some rules for rounding off calculated answers. There's two different rules, one for addition and subtraction and one for multiplication and division. Okay? When you go to round, First, you have to figure out how many significant figures are needed. 
Then you're going to round to that many digits counting from the left. So you'll start from the left hand side of the number. And then you look at the number past what you can keep. If it's less than 5, you drop it. If it's greater than 5, you're going to increase the previous number by 1. Okay? So you'll see what I'm talking about when I do some examples. So here's the rule for addition and subtraction. With addition and subtraction, you want to count to the least number of decimal places. Okay, so you'll see some examples, but it's the least number of decimal places. And that can be zero. Okay, and that's what you're going to round your answer to. So, same rule right there, but now you have an example. 6.8 plus 11.934. The first thing you always do with your calculations is do the math. So take a calculator, add these up, and what you get is 18.734. Now, when you're trying to figure out significant figures, you count decimal places, 6.8. This is one decimal place, one DP. 9.34 has three decimal places. Oops, three decimal places. I can only have the least number of decimal places. So that means with addition and subtraction, I can only go one spot past the decimal. So I can go 18.7. I get to keep those numbers. I look at the three. It's less than five, so I just drop everything else. So it's 18.7, and my answer has a total of three significant figures. Okay, so again, here's a chance for you to pause and practice. Get a calculator, try them out, and see if you can round to the proper significant figure. So pause the recording now and try these calculations. So what you have here is 3.24 meters plus 7 meters. You punch it into your calculator, you get 10.4. So when you're trying to round for significant figures, you have two spots after the decimal, and here you have one spot after the decimal. My least number of significant figures, or I'm sorry, my least number of decimal places is one at the 7.0. So that means I can only keep one spot after the decimal. And with that four, I don't do anything, so my answer is 10.2 meters. Notice I include the units. You need to include the units on the answers when they're provided, or it's incorrect. The next one, 100.0 grams minus 23.73 grams. You do the math, okay, you get 76.27. That's what your calculator says. Again, you have one spot after the decimal here and two spots after the decimal there. That means my answer can only have one spot after the decimal because I go for the least. It's the golf score, my least accurate measurement. And so my 76.27 becomes 76.3 grams. Your next example, 0 0.02 plus 2.371 centimeters. Put it in your calculator, that's what you get. And then again, we count decimal places. So this is two spots after the decimal. This measurement here is three spots after the decimal. I go with the least. So that means I can keep all those numbers. And with the one, I do nothing for the rounding. I just drop it and I get 2.39 centimeters. All right, 713.1 liters minus 3.872. You put it in your calculator, this is what you get. In terms of the least spots after the decimal, here you've got one, so that means I can only have one spot after the decimal. This one had three. And so that rounds to 709.2 liters. You're going to have to practice a lot at these significant figures. We use them all year round. Okay, so they don't go away. You're going to keep practicing and using them throughout the entire year in chemistry. Here's our next, answer, our next question. 18, 18 pounds, so 1,818 pounds, plus 3.37 pounds, 
look at the number of decimal places. The 3.37 has two decimal places. This 1,818 has no spots after the decimal, okay? Punch it in your calculator, you get 1,821.37 pounds, but since my least number of spots after the decimal place after the decimal were zero, that means I can only keep up to the decimal and nothing past it. So my answer is 1,821 pounds. Again, 2.030 milliliters minus 1.870 milliliters. Do the math, this is what you get. Okay, so this is another tricky one. Take a look at it. You've got three spots after the decimal here, three spots after the decimal there, but your calculator only gave you two numbers. Calculators are dumb. You gotta be smarter than your calculator. So sometimes in cases like this, you need to put the zero back, okay? So that ultimately you get three spots after the decimal in your answer. So watch out for tricky things like that. That's where sometimes students make their mistakes. Okay, so note that I had to add a zero there. So that was addition and subtraction. What we do in this class mainly is a lot of multiplication and division. And multiplication and division, the rule is easy. Okay, you're gonna count the number of significant figures, just like we were doing when I first showed them to you, and then go with the least. Round it to the least number of significant figures in the problem. So again, that's just the uh, same thing written down. Here's our problem. Always do the math first. So 6.38 times 2.0, that gives you 12.76 when you do it in the calculator. Well, you go back and you look at your problem. 6.38, that is three significant figures. 2.0, the two is significant, the zero is significant because it is a trailing zero with a decimal. So this is two significant figures. So since that is my lowest number of significant figures, that's all I can keep. I can only keep up to here. So 12.76, I look to the seven, that means round up, and I get 13. And that's only two significant figures then. So, Again, you kind of have those special cases with zeros. I showed you one on the addition and subtraction. So what if your answer has less significant figures than you're supposed to have? So if you take a look at this calculator example, if you put in your calculator 100.00 and divide it by 5.00, it's going to spit out 20. Okay, that's what it's going to give you. But if you look at 100.00, that is 5 significant figures and 5.00 is three significant figures well 20 that your calculator spits out is just one significant figure so you can see that here 20 is one significant figure if I add the decimal I have a trailing zero with a decimal that's two significant figures but I'm looking for three so I have to add another zero so 20.0 is three significant figures, and that's the correct answer. I like to ask these questions on quizzes and tests because I know those are the ones the students mess up. You get into the habit of writing down what your calculator says, but that's not always the whole answer there. Okay, so again, try these out. All right, work through the calculations and round them to the proper significant figures. You should pause this presentation now. Okay, so 3.24 meters times 7.0 meters, you multiply that out, you get 22.68. You look at the 3.24, that is three significant figures. 7.0 is two significant figures. You have a trailing zero with a decimal point. That means my answer can only have two significant figures, so I can keep the 22. I look at the next number, it's a six, so that means round up 
and my final answer is 23 meters squared. Your next example, 100.0 grams divided by 23.7 centimeters cubed. Do the math, that's what your calculator spits out. I don't ever want to see that many numbers written down. Okay, you need to follow your significant figure rules. So here, 100.0 is four significant figures. 23.7 is three significant figures. That's my lowest number. So I get to keep three significant figures up to here. 4.21, I look at the nine, it says round up, and that is the correct answer. 4.22 grams per centimeter cubed. Your next calculation, 0 0.02 centimeters times 2.371 centimeters. Multiply it out, that's what your calculator gives you, 0 0.04742 centimeters squared. Go back and look at your significant figures. These are leading zeros, so they're not gonna count. So this is only one significant figure. And then here, these are all significant, so that's four significant figures. One significant figure is the least. That means I can only keep one significant figure in the answer. Now these zeros are leading zeros. They are not significant, but I keep them as placeholders. So I keep going through the zeros, zero, 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 and then to the four, that's my first significant digit, and I look to the next number to round, and that's my correct answer, 0 0.05 centimeters squared, okay? It will never round down to zero. 710 meters divided by 3.0 seconds. This is what your calculator gives you, 236.6 meters squared with a repeating six. I look at the 710, I have a trailing zero but no decimal point, so this is only two significant figures. 3.0 that's a trailing zero, but this time there is a decimal point. That's also two significant figures. So that means in my answer, I can only keep two significant figures. So the 23 is good, or the 230 is good, but I need to look at that six and it says round up. So my answer is 240 meters squared. The question to ask yourself is, is the answer close? I know a lot of you might have written 24 as your answer, but the thing you have to ask yourself is, is 24 close to 236? It's not, but 240 is close to 236, and this 240 is still only two significant figures. So remember, you're rounding. The numbers should be close together. 1,818.2 pounds times 3.23 feet. That's what your calculator gives you. So if you count up your significant figures, this here is five significant figures. 3.23, that's three significant figures. Remember, you always go with the least. So again, this is another one of those situations where you get to keep the first couple of numbers, but this gets to become a placeholder zero. So now your close answer is 5,870 pounds uh, times foot, feet, pounds times feet. Just a couple more here to practice. You need lots of practice. That's the only way to learn these. Um, 1.030 grams times 2.87 milliliters. That's what the calculator gives you. This here, okay, the one counts, the three counts. That's a sandwiched zero, so it counts. This is a trailing zero with a decimal place. So this zero counts. That is four significant figures. And then this right here is three. So three is our least. You could keep the first three numbers, and that becomes 2.96 grams per milliliter. Okay? So those are the rest of the practice. Your assignment for this chapter is to continue practicing those. Now, at this point, 
Okay, you can see the next slide is our unit organizer. At this point, what you need to do is you need to take your unit organizer and arrange what you learned. Okay, so today we worked on measurement. So what you should do is you should add circles here about um, measurements should be a number and a unit. Okay, and you can draw yourself a circle. And we also talked about accuracy and precision. So see, you can see those two there, accuracy and precision. These need to come off of measurements. And then um, also measurements. Today you learned about sig figs. Okay, you can call them sig figs. So you should do that and maybe put your rules down here. So when I go to check your notes and your worksheet, I'm going to check your unit organizer and make sure that you filled it out. So accuracy there and precision and maybe put the definitions in there. The idea is that this is a one-stop shopping to kind of understand your unit. So when you're going to study, you can go, what have I learned about measurements? It's a number and a unit. You have significant figures because they're uncertain. Um, numbers can be accurate or precise or they can be both. Okay, These are things you should know. You should have more filled out than what I just wrote here. I just wrote that down as an example. And if you look at the unit self-test questions, okay, what's the difference between precision and accuracy? You should be able to answer question four. Okay, so that's one of the questions you should understand at this point after listening to your lecture. When you go to take your quiz on the computer, first thing you need to do is you have to have your notes and your worksheet checked off by me and then you'll be allowed to take the quiz. And from there, you know, hopefully you'll pass it. If I check off your worksheet, you usually should be able to pass the quiz. If you have any questions, please see me in class.